certain situations in the past. Does that challenge really invigorate you? Does that, that, that you know, that you know that you've kind of got to build? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a bit it's a, a bit I love the best. I've said it in the past that you know I've been fortunate because I've had success, but whenever I reflect on every sort of job I've had, it's not the su success that I kind of look back on, reflect on. It's the build that I reflect on because at that time you know that it's not going to be smooth. Um, there are going to be plenty of doubters, and you know that's that's when your belief and resolve gets tested. Not just for me personally, but for the whole you know the whole club, the whole group, and. I love working through that, you know, and getting out the other side. I, I really enjoy it. And like I said, that was the biggest attraction for me in, in this position was, you know, aside from it being, like I said, a massive football club and, a, and the premier competition in the world was an opportunity to, to do something that people will see as, you know, uh, in many respects, um, insurmountable. I love that. I th I, I, yeah, you know, I think, again, I don't think in those terms, but there's no doubt for me that, and I think Harry would say it himself, is he wants his team to be successful, and he's been very, very successful individually for a long time, pretty much since he first started at this football club, and yet the club hasn't had success. So he'd be the first one to say that we need to have a strong team, and that's, why my, that's where my focus is, to build a team that, you know, will, will reflect the same sort of individual excellence that he's had within a team context. So, you know, I'm certainly big on, on you know, team ethos and, and making sure that, you know, that we, we need a strong unit if we're going to be successful. And I'm sure Harry would be the first to, 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 to vouch that that needs to be the case. John, Mark. Okay, mate. You know, look. If I say it's annoying me, I, you know, you know be, be a misleading. But it doesn't register. I, I'm not, you know, unless I, I always believe that you, you, you're much better, sort of, trying to understand what a situation is through your own eyes. And and for me, it's in my head right now. Harry's on holiday. He's lying on a sunbed and you know, playing with his family and having a great time. That's the picture I've got. Now, if, if other things are going on, I'm not going to think about them. And, and uh, you know, the reason I don't is because he'll be here in two days' time and everything I need to know will be sitting in right in front of me. So in the meantime, I'm not going to sort of lose time or sleep on, on sort of what conjecture there may or may not be out there. Some of it, because then you're jumping at shadows, how much of it is true, how much of it is not true. Um, nothing's landed on my desk at this moment from anybody at the club that says that, you know, there's a decision to be made there, not even close to that. So, because of that, I'm, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to, to having Harry here on on sort of Wednesday and uh, and getting ready for the for the tour. Was it important for you that this didn't turn into a saga that runs throughout the summer up until August the thirty first? Because we've seen that in the past. Like yeah. Not yeah. And look. <laughs> Irrespective of my desires, I'm sure you guys will make sure it does. So, um, again, it's something I have no control over. So, what what I need to deal with is, and what I will deal with is, as I have with it in the past, is again, what I see day to day. Is it affecting the group? Is it affecting Harry? That that's the only time it'll kind of maybe register. It won't affect me. I'll, I'll come in here every week and I'll try and answer the questions as best as I can. But. Um, that'll be the barometer. And right now I don't have that barometer because he's not even here yet. So that'll tell me, you know, whether that's becoming an issue or not. And, and you know, I, I doubt somebody, you know, like Harry would let it affect him uh, in any sort of way because this football club means too much to him and he wouldn't let it infiltrate the dressing room. So I guess um, it's how we react as a football club. It's going to be important and that'll get tested, mate, for sure. I 
Yeah, plenty because, um, you know, I've said a few times that if, if you do grow up on the other side of the world, you kind of, you don't have it on your doorstep. So anything you could get, and, and for the most part for us, it was, you know, the Premier League or the English First Division back when I was growing up. And, uh, you know, I remember Ricky Villa and Aussie Adilis, absolutely. And I remember that FA Cup final, absolutely, because I was, that was, they were my best childhood memories, I've said before, because I was, that was probably me and my dad, 2am, you know, and that's me as a young boy sitting on a couch watching a game of football. So plenty of Tottenham teams, uh, you know, Glenn Hoddle's an absolute master and, and those kind of players, you know, resonated around the world, you know. Sometimes I know it's hard for you guys to understand that because it's you've had it, you know, right in front of you your whole, your whole lives, but when you're living on the other side of the world, it's a real investment, you know, <laughs> you, to, to get up in the middle of the night and, 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 and it stays with you, you know, those kind of things stays with you and there's plenty of, you know, teams through that era and, and players, Tottenham players that have uh, definitely, uh, I have strong memories of in, in my childhood. Charlie. How, how much help and support is Pep Guardiola given you? Pep Guardiola? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's spoken at he's spoken length about Yeah, yeah, I'm, and, and very gracious of him. But I think I've I've probably spent twenty minutes in his company, mate. So, and I've never spoken to him otherwise. So, um, but if you're asking me, you know, he's going to go down as one of the greatest managers of all time. He's had an unbelievable influence on the game of football, and all of us involved in it, uh, whether it's you know, um, consciously or unconsciously been influenced by him, absolutely. Um, you know, what, a, what an unbelievable manager, you know, and... Uh, um, but you can check my phone, mate, he's not in there. I, can, I, 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 I don't have him as Pep, you know, to, to call up. Yeah, that's right, that's when I met him, yeah, and, it was, and he was great, he's very generous. And look, most of the, you know, most of the top managers, I mean, I... I you know, I tell people, I, I, I coached against Sir Alex Ferguson in, in 2000 in Brazil, you know, and, and we, we did a press conference together and he, he gave me 15 minutes of his time, mate. It was gold for me. I was only sort of, you know, I think I was 34 at the time and, and, you know, I was coaching a team from Australia and playing against Man U in the Club World Cup and he spent 10, 15 minutes that were gold for me, you know. So, you know, all, I think all the great managers and, and, you know, the great people in this world, they have that trademark of being generous and, um, and you know, when I came across Pep in... in in, in Japan, he was. He was, you know, generous with his time, and uh, you know, yeah, you know, those kind of things always are. You know, you don't want to. Yeah, you know, there are people who you admire from afar, and there are plenty that after I met them, I wish I hadn't. But you know, <laughs> no, no, but uh, um, you know, but he's not one of them, you know, and and. It's kind of been a guiding principle in my life. I don't want anyone to sort of walk away disappointed if they've had a chat to me. Um, so you, you kind of want to be kind with your time, and he, he certainly was. Liam. Uh, very open about Celtic, about Celtic management, about the players, about the Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my my wife and my kids loved it up there, and like I said, they, you know, my whole family was really happy. But we also, you know, I've got two young ones, and and they've lived abroad their whole life, and now four different countries. So we we kind of made a decision as a family that, you know, wherever sort of my profession took us, we'd go and we'd experience that, and and you know. My wife knows better than anyone that I can't resist the challenge. That's when I'm at my best and I, I don't, you know, my history is I've, I've never stayed too long at too many clubs, you know. I've always left when clubs are successful and all I've tried to do wherever I've been is, you know, like most managers, I guess, you try and leave the club you've you've kind of inherited in a better place than when you picked it up and, and you know, like I said, hopefully um, make a positive impact and, you know, it, it was a tough decision for sure but, but it was a tough decision to leave the Australian national team before a World Cup. It was tough to leave, you know, Yokohama after, you know, winning the championship there, you know. You establish relationships with people. They're always tough decisions. But um, for me, 
you know, I've always gone with my gut with these things. And and like I said, I, I, I know when I'm at my best. And when I'm at my best is when the challenge is the biggest. And I thought this was a challenge that kind of would 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 fit all of the things that I'm looking for as the next step. Yeah. yeah. And it just comes down, like I said, to 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 where I felt, you know, the biggest the biggest challenge, you know, was there for me, you know, and um, I've I've always tried to, you know, I, for me to to come from where I've come from to be sitting here today, I needed to have that instinct inside me to know when to move on. Because I've had to be faultless in my career to get to this point. Because, like, no one's going to rate an Australian manager, are they? So if I'd had any sort of failures, significant failures along the way, I was never going to get here. Part of that process has been to me to know that, you know, I, I need to keep moving to be at my best. And, and, and you know, I, yes, there, there's always challenges at every club you're at. You know, every club I've been at that I've left or even the national team, I could have... There was more challenges, but there are always challenges. Always. You know, even if I stayed at a club for five years, I'd never be satisfied that where we're at, right, I'll be looking to improve all the time. So that's not the key factor for me. The key factor for me was that there was a an opportunity here to, to again, make an impact at a football club, which I've tried to do at every club I've been.